for, for some perspective uh, on TARP and the ongoing debate over financial reform, let's bring in Lynn Turner, former chief accountant at the SEC. He's not a fan of TARP or of Wall Street's reaction to financial reform. Also with us, Doug Elliott, economic study a fellow at the Brookings Institution and a former J.P. Morgan investment banker. Speaking of Jamie Dimon, he's testified before Congress about financial reform. We'll talk to him about uh, Jamie's comments and the whole deal as well. But Lynn, let me start with you and get your reaction here to what we just heard from Tim. We've heard the same thing uh, pretty much from uh, other people in the TARP program. Even the Special Inspector General, Neil Borofsky, says, OK, we're getting our money back and they achieved what they wanted to as far as flooding the banks with liquidity. Uh, why do you think the program was a failure? Well, I, I actually don't think it was a failure, <clears throat> but I do think it raises the issues that uh, the SIG TARP Inspector General Borowski raised. I think it has created the moral uh, hazard issue, and I think that will be the legacy. Uh, we also don't know the true cost yet because we're not out of Fannie and we're not out of Freddie and those two debacles yet, so we don't know the cost of those. And in the numbers that Tim just added up and discussed, what he hasn't factored into those is the cost to the American taxpayer of administering and uh, funding this whole program. And those dollars weren't for free. Uh, the American government had to, had to borrow. Uh, the American taxpayer will be paying interest costs on those. And uh, the, the government hasn't been very transparent in that regard of telling us what the real true cost is. And, and like I said, until we're out of Fannie and Freddie, we don't know. Now, it's better that we're making money than losing money to date, but the final chapter in this story hasn't been written and probably won't be written until uh, we find out whether or not, in fact, the moral hazard uh, truly exists. Doug, do you agree with Lynn? Well, first, Fannie and Freddie are going to cost us a lot of money. Could be a couple hundred billion dollars. But that, that wasn't in TARP. If you look at just the TARP program, I think we got a bargain. I would have been willing to pay several hundred billion dollars to get the benefit that we got from it, which was to keep us from an absolute meltdown. So I don't know whether we're going to come out even or lose 50 or how. We could lose 100 billion dollars, though I doubt it. What? I'd but, still think it was a real success at that level. But, Doug, what about the, the moral hazard issue that uh, Borofsky's talked about that Lynn brings up here? I mean, banks now know that they can be too big to fail. Heck, they're even bigger than they were before this whole uh, debacle, right? And we're going to have to save them if there's an issue again. Well, look, moral hazard is an issue. And it was made worse by this, there's no question. But there was a lot of moral hazard in the system prior to the rescue. Remember, Everybody was counting on these big guys to get rescued, with good reason. And certainly you look at Fannie and Freddie, that was an absolute case of that. So yeah, we need to do something about moral hazard, but it's really hard to do and it's virtually impossible to eliminate. Because we know in our bones that in a bad enough crisis, any government will step in. I want to toss, uh, I actually want to bring in some sound from Jamie Dimon. He spoke at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington today, had a lot to say about the regulatory environment. Listen up. It's even more complicated now. Regulators who are already there are forming departments whose only job is to be the interface to the other department. Now, that's bureaucracy. So, so Lynn, is Jamie right? Is it just getting more and more complicated, going to cost banks more and really not maybe change anything? Well, let's remember why this uh, reform legislation was passed in the first place. It was because the system that existed beforehand didn't work, broke down, and it was, for all practical purposes, uh, destroyed by these banks. So to have a, a guy from the bank stand up and say, let's go back to what we had before, is questionable at, at best. I do mm. think, and, and I agree with Diamond, that regulation has to be uh, uh, you know, good. It has to be efficient, effective, uh, and uh, but it is something that, uh, without a doubt, go undergoes a substantial change after the change that we've seen in this country, where uh, you know tens of millions of Americans lost trillions, right. uh, tens of millions lost their jobs, trillions in lost value in their homes, and for Mr. Diamond to stand up and say, 
oh, don't don't put regulation on us as a bank, given the fact that we did all that destruction to you, I found to be somewhat astounding. Yeah, it is. I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree with you, Lynn. Doug, I mean, where is the happy medium? Where Where is it that we don't restrict our financials so much that a lot of business goes overseas at the same time that we protect and assets here of folks in the United States and that we don't go through another financial crisis? Look, I, I mostly agree with Lynn. The world blew up. You have to regulate differently going forward and regulate with a, what's going to unfortunately be a significantly greater burden. But I'd say, for example, the comment about bureaucracy, I have tremendous respect for Jamie Dimon and for J.P. Morgan, where I used to work. But he obviously hasn't filled out one of his own travel expense reimbursement forms. There's a lot of bureaucracy in the private sector, too. Mm -hmm. It's not just the public sector. And, uh, and I saw a lot more bureaucracy at the J.P. Morgan that I left than the one I started at 20-some years before that that was a lot smaller. When you're doing a big job, you're going to have a fair amount of bureaucracy. In terms of the balance, it's really hard to answer that in total. The devil's in the details. You just have to try to get the things right. But I will say, I know he emphasized concerns about international coordination. And he's right to point out that we need to regulate these global businesses in a consistent way around the globe. But I've looked at this a lot, and I have to say, big picture, we're doing a pretty good job of making sure that the different G20 countries have more or less the same broad approaches here. There will be problems, I'm sure, but I, I don't think the problems are of the magnitude that would, as he seemed to imply, mean that we should pull back sharply on regulation. You know, speaking of magnitude, Alan Greenspan in the Financial Times today says uh, about the Dodd-Frank Act that it may create the largest regulatory-induced market distortion since America's ill-fated imposition of wage and price controls in 1971. I mean, that seems a pretty strong statement. And you can go ahead and say that he's trying to save his legacy. Uh, but let me ask you, Lynn, uh, you know, specifically, you look at price controls, and I think the debit card legislation, the Durham Amendment is uh, pretty, pretty much exactly that. I mean, do you think that this is the kind of thing we need to be doing in response to the financial crisis? Well, again, I think any regulation has to be effective, it has to be efficient, and it has to be enforced. We've had almost no enforcement uh, in uh, a handful of years now uh, with respect to these banks, so that's problematic as, as, as well. I don't think that this is going to be the type of market distortion that Greenspan uh, espouses. Uh, of course, this is the same guy that was espousing that everyone ought to have an adjustable rate mortgage. Uh, so I, d I don't know that I put a whole lot of credence in what Greenspan says anymore. Uh, he was very anti-regulatory when I was at the commission, dealt with him a lot. He just doesn't believe in any regulation. Uh, what's Unfortun so unfortunately uh, that's all we have time for Lynn and Doug thanks so much for joining us we have to take a break here on street smart